we're kind of spoiling ourselves for breakfast today. We're having some of the delicious oranges from iVegan. All of the fruit we've had so far, by the way, has been absolutely fantastically fresh and really yummy. Maybe because we got most of it from iVegan and they're totally about like the organic foods, everything being super fresh, non-GMO, all of that. Uh, so it's delicious. We've been eating a lot of it. Fruit's amazing. So we've got some oranges and then we're kind of uh, being a little bit silly and having a couple of scallion pancakes and this delicious hot soy milk. This is a really great way to start the day, but my beloved scallion pancakes are probably going to need to be more of an occasional breakfast treat, but man, they are so yummy. Guys, guys, there's a bird who's like sunbathing from the heat out there. Oh my goodness, I wonder if I should put out some water for them. It's gonna be something like 110 today. Let me see if I can get some cool pictures of them with a the wildlife camera. Good morning, Mal. It's good to see you. So it seems out of the three roof cats who frequent our home here in Taiwan, this one, who I have nicknamed Bird, happens to be the one who stops by the most often. I know you guys saw a lot of them yesterday. They have figured out where the food is. I added some water today too, because it is going to be about 113 degrees Fahrenheit today. So I wanted to make sure that they would have some clean water to drink. Um, and I'll pull in the food and the water every single night so that we don't have the cats fighting over it and we don't get any bugs or, or nasties inside of it. But Mao is here again today. This one's nickname is Bird. I have nicknamed the orange one that we haven't seen for a little bit, Boss. And then I've named the other one with the beautiful black nose who's on the banner of our vlog channel right now. Uh, Noble Lady, that's her name, is Noble Lady. And I hope the Noble Lady comes back but she likes to hide on the very top of the roof but with it being hundred and thirteen degrees Fahrenheit today we might see her in other places but it looks like bird hi bird bird likes to stay here absolutely all day long so that's really fun to know that I have that company Yin Yang Tian it's a blazing hot day and I can feel the heat rippling across my skin even standing here in the shade I do not envy my beloved Chips for having to walk all the way to campus and back today. Oh my gosh. Did you guys see Bird back there behind me? Oh, that's so fun. It actually means a lot to be able to have a companion during the day like that. I hadn't realized just how much I would miss having my birds around. I knew I would miss them, but there's something special about when I am in my little workspace, which here is my awesome little desk that I have set up over on the other side of the room, having that constant company with you, knowing that there's another living creature that's very low key, not like a, you know, a person or a, forgive me dog lovers, but like a puppy who often is like right in your face or they need lots of attention. Having something like birds or a cat who kind of just hangs out with you is just really nice company while I am getting ready for the work day. And I am getting ready for my first official work day here in Taiwan. Oh my gosh, I guess that's something to celebrate because I truly do love what I do. But it has been a little bit of an interesting bumpy start to the day other than delicious breakfast. Oh my goodness, I know I should not enjoy those scallion pancakes as much as I do. They apparently literally translate into oil cake. That's what their characters stand for, is like oil cake. So that kind of tells you how they're made and they're probably not the best for me. But for the first time since we got here, other than when we ate at Ucha Cha, my stomach is happy with me. My stomach is finally like, okay, I'll accept what you have given me and I won't fuss about it. So I haven't really been um, feeling like tummy sick since we got here. None of the food I've eaten has made me sick, which is really nice. All of the fruit is super fresh. All of the food is really delicious. But it, Chips and I joked that it like freaked both of our stomachs out and, they, and we were just like, I'm not hungry. Like you know you should be hungry. But I think because between the jet lag and because we've been waking and sleeping at such weird hours, we'd wake up in the middle of the night starving, like eat some of the cold noodles in our fridge and go back to sleep. Uh, just getting used to all the jet lag and then also getting used to an entirely new food. We're eating noodles and dumplings and scallion pancakes and totally different things than what we normally eat for our daily meals. Usually we have like a rice uh, and roasted vegetable Buddha bowl for dinner. We'll have, uh, Chips will have cereal and I'll have a protein bar and an orange for breakfast. We'll have uh, like a sandwich or something simple for lunch if we have lunch before a Buddha bowl. So to switch from that, 
at the food we've been eating in Taiwan, I think that our bodies got shy and they just didn't want to pretend they were hungry, even though we were hungry. So instead of knowing that I needed to get a meal, I kind of had to like just make myself eat even though the food was yummy. But today, finally, that delicious hot soy milk, some fresh oranges and scallion pancakes settled my stomach and it was such a relief. I hadn't realized that I had been waiting to feel comfortably normally full. Not like over full, just like normally full and not kind of like uh, the feeling that has been with me the last few days has been like when you're on a roller coaster or when you're in an elevator that suddenly drops and your stomach kind of drops and sort of feels suspended. That's kind of what it's been like. Maybe that's jet lag. Maybe that's another thing I need to remember for jet lag. Bland food will be my friend when we travel internationally in the future instead of going out to the fanciest places to eat right away maybe I'm just going to look for rice gruel and be very happy about that for the first week and it's not even been a week yet oh my gosh I'm still trying to get my head around that idea too waking up and falling asleep at all of these random times just makes you feel like it's been forever and it's not it's been like I think four five days now I think it's been uh uh eat or Sure, I messed it up. I can do like a Japanese Ichi ni san shi go roku na hachi kyuju, no problem. I think it's been, let's see, Taiwan, then we had vegetables. So today's day five, okay. Yeah, it's only been five days. It's been about 6% of our trip here at Taiwan, which is really nothing and that's really fast all at once. Huh. But yeah, today is going to be the first day, thankfully, that I have eaten breakfast and it has been handled quite well. We're going to try making dinner here later. We don't have a rice cooker, which stunned me. I thought being in Taiwan, we would have a rice cooker, but there's no rice cooker. So we're just going to cook uh, the rice we got. We got organic rice from the 24-hour welcome mart that's just like practically right downstairs. And Chips has pointed out that you can get a lot of organic food here in Taiwan. It feels like people are really health conscious when it comes to the groceries that you can even get from like the 7-elevens. Everything that you pick up says that it's like organic or GMO free, pesticide free. Uh, it's really interesting. They don't really have anything that's like local, local grown here cherries. But the cherries that I ate from the Welcome Mart were the same ones that are grown in the United States. They cost about the same and they were organic and they were delicious. So it's really interesting because we are eating organic fruits and vegetables here in Taiwan no problem and they're really yummy so that's reassuring but yeah oh, it's day five day five and and it started off with a good breakfast but I guess I'm also rambling because I have to get to the point I don't really want to talk about now because I'm still mad I'm still kind of furious <laughs> and I very rarely ever am angry anymore I happen to live a really wonderful kind of life and I very rarely feel angry but today I woke up and unfortunately saw some things that made me very angry and they happened to do with our posters. I handled each and every one of the posters that we sent out to our community members, those precious signed posters that I cried my eyes out over because it meant so much to take something that was super special and create it and pack it up and don't cry Siri, just be angry, don't cry, you have a lot of work to do today. I handled each and every one of those posters like they were glass. I put them carefully into poster tubes. The poster tubes I bought were almost like $1.30 more expensive than another kind, but I got them because I wanted to eat the cost because it meant that they would be safer, right? So that that way people's posters wouldn't be damaged because that's important to me to take care of our community. And I woke up today and three people reached out to me who are really precious to me. And I'm really scared that people who are a little bit more intimidated or aren't as close to me or our community won't feel like they can reach out. So if you're watching and you have something to say about what may have happened to your poster in transit too, please let me know. I'm fixing this as quickly as I can. But three people had damaged posters and they were damaged in transit. And I had no idea that apparently it's kind of common if you send poster tubes that don't have poster tape for people to tamper with the posters. I would not have, like, maybe I'm just a rule follower. 
maybe I just believe when you pay somebody for a service, they should follow through on the service. Yeah, I'm a little mad. I'm a little toasty right now. I apologize. Normally I never reveal that I have a temper. I have a very deep and active temper and it's flared up today because uh, some of the USPS post offices dropped the ball extremely on taking care of something that's extremely precious to me and the posters that were sent out to some of our community members. Now Chips, my sister and Logic say that three or four posters um, out of, you know, 137 shouldn't be considered something that is not, like, that's pretty good, but it still makes me mad. Uh, one poster looks like it was literally stabbed with a box cutter or a pair of scissors. It was actively, and in my opinion, it looks deliberately stabbed with scissors or a box cutter and I'm kind of stunned and two other posters show evidence of having been opened and tampered with to some degree before they were they were closed again and the way that they were closed tore the edges of some of the posters I didn't know that was a thing I looked it up apparently that's a thing apparently you worry apparently at some point in the route whether it's like the people who handle your poster to deliver or the people who like just see it sitting there in the mail it's a, apparently and I'm really toasty about this I'm sorry pretty common to open it up tamper with it and stick it back in just to see you know just to give it a little peek and then it tears if you don't handle it carefully enough I know because chips and I any of them that almost snagged if they snagged or if we didn't roll them properly they came out that's why out of 150 posters I only sold 137 anytime I put I put all the posters into tubes before they sold so that I would know if they were damaged or not and any of them that I so much as even slightly had a little crinkle in, came back out and went in the rejected pile. That's why I mentioned a few vlogs ago that I had a whole bunch of damaged posters. They're totally fine except like maybe there's a crinkle here or maybe there's a tiny tear on the edge of an, a poster piece right here. Uh, a couple of them just came from the printing company, kind of like, eh, I don't know about this. This doesn't look like it was printed as sharply as it could be normal i have my family's done product stuff and shipping for ages but i had no idea that that was something i had to worry about and so i'm kind of i'm i'm really kind of angry at whatever postal carriers or people handled it tampered with it who stabs one with a box cutter oh my gosh and i had no idea that if you sell posters the reason people put the little poster tape on the end is to prevent tampering i thought that was illegal <laughs> tampering with mail i guess i just follow the rules too much so oh i'm all i'm all flushed up and, and like blushing on my hands because i'm so mad but i'm trying to remedy that situation but that was the first thing i woke up to today and it just had my blood pressure through the roof uh and apparently the local usps and i contacted them to go what the heck guys what's happening i shipped out every single poster and handed the whole box they were all put into two different boxes for two big deliveries and handed it to the usps person and it's like awesome now they're off have a wonderful time spread joy through the world little poster tubes and they were not all scanned in so on etsy it says that they haven't even been shipped yet when every single poster has been shipped but somebody neglected to scan in every single one of the poster tubes i can kind of see that if you're having a bad day it was memorial day week so it, they were already a couple days behind business uh like schedule i know that um they seemed really harried and kind of like flustered when i handed the boxes off but you just kind of go like oh it'll be all right you know oh yeah it was memorial day week but i'm sure they'll handle this package fine and uh, apparently they didn't so there are about i counted about 20 posters that say on etsy they have not been shipped but they have and I have photographic evidence. I cannot tell you guys how relieved my anger was that trying to have them go like, oh, well maybe it hasn't really been delivered and then being able to whip out pictures of being there, of handing it over, of vlog segments that I made. Yeah, that was really kind of, that was really kind of validating to be like, no, 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 no. 
here are the vlogs, the actual video recording I have of putting them into tubes. Here are the pictures I have of them being safely in tubes that are not stabbed with box cutters or banged up. And that was really vindicating actually, to be honest, to be able to be like, I handled these with glass hands, like making sure they were taken care of because these people matter to me. This matters to me and it matters to people out there and I've seen dozens of pictures and tweets of the posters being in just fine quality uh, from people who have received them but I'm still toasty uh, not just because it's a very hot day I tried to look up what like hot day is in Chinese with this cool dictionary chips gave me uh, and I already forgot what it is Yang Yin San or something like that. I'll have to look it up again. I know I would say Atsui if it was uh, if we were in Japan, or I'd be like Atsui. It's so hot. Um, but I'm feeling pretty toasty too. It's a pretty hot day for a lot of reasons. Um, but yeah, so I apologize if you guys have gotten one of the posters and they're not in the like perfect condition. Please let me know. I I am willing to do refunds. I'm not in the United States because I trusted naively that everything would be fine. Um and so I won't be able to to print and sign and send new ones out. But this was so we could build the community. This is unacceptable. And I'm actually taking uh notes of all of the things that have happened and filing formal complaints cuz this is not no. Yeah, you guys probably haven't ever seen me angry before but I can handle a lot of things if it's just like me sucking it up I've gotten stuff that's been damaged from the mail before and you go oh and I didn't take it personally like oh that person didn't try to take care of my my package well but I don't want that sliver of doubt in anybody in our community so if something happened to your poster and you're like well, I don't know about this please let me know I didn't know it was a thing for people to pan like tamper with posters and I will admit three or four out of 137 or 138 posters that got sent out probably a pretty good ratio considering that's like hundreds of employees that handled each tube if you think it through if you're waiting for shipping confirmation every single shipping every single poster was shipped they were shipped in two big batches in two big boxes I handed them physically over myself I have picture evidence of having each and every poster carefully put into tubes carefully secured those tubes were purchased even though they were much more expensive because they would specifically protect our product our our precious poster better Whew. and if you had problems don't be afraid about approaching me this was not so I could roll around and be like yay I sold lots of stuff this was to build our community and to give me a little bit of a buffer for being safe for finances for summer and it definitely has helped with that but I have no qualms about returning money and getting a new poster I already have uh, a secret thank you gift that will be going out to everybody who bought a poster in August I'm working on that right now but whew, I'm a little toasty <sighs> So that happened, um, and I don't know if I'll ship with USPS in the future, because this is really surprising. And again, the ratio is really good, and if I think about it, it may not even be my local post office, so they have no excuse for not scanning in all of those tubes. I don't care if there was like 138 tubes suddenly in two boxes that you had to deal with. My apologies if that seems a little bit blunt, but yeah, I had to deal with rolling up 138 posters and putting some aside that I didn't do a good job of and putting the labels on and making sure they were in there safe so you can at least just scan them correctly so that people know they're on their way. Uh, phew. <laughs> but I need to take some deep breaths. I don't mean to alarm you guys if I seem a little bit upset. Um, I'm not mad at any of our community members. I'm frustrated because I don't want people to think that that's how much I cared to send a damaged product like that because I did not. And like I said, I'm really happy I had pictures and video evidence of the process because that's going to be used when I lodge my formal complaints. Um, and I do think it's important to do that because that's I'll tell you the truth of why I think it's important to do that. I know the adults are very understanding and I am more than willing to go out of my way to refund, refurbish. I, like I said, I already have a secret thank you project that is going to go out to every single person who got a poster anyway uh, once I get back in the States. But to 
have the idea of a younger viewer get something that's supposed to be so special that they may have used their birthday request money for or they may have used their allowance money for and it's damaged like that their first big thing from me that is unacceptable because I know how much that would hurt a little kid and that's I'm very protective of children. Maybe it's left over from when I was a foster mother um, and dealt with some of the the most abused kids that I ran into in Kansas City. Um, man, that was hard. But maybe it's left over from that, but I'm very protective of kids and their happiness. And the idea that, that I know the adults will understand, man, yeah, man, like the post office sometimes doesn't handle things correctly. And Again, not to bash the post office either, that's probably hundreds of different hands that handled these poster tubes. And for the most part, they're all fine, except for this handful. But just the idea that a kid could get it and that it could be damaged and that it could hurt their excitement, their thrill, their happiness, uh, the joy that they experience around the entire thing, that's unacceptable to me. That's, it's so important to preserve that sense of excitement and joy and ambition and, and there's special things in the world for little kids and of course for adults, but I just feel like it's such a more fragile thing in children. I probably won't be using the USPS in the future. I'll have to think about it. I'll have to think about uh, how, how bad the cost ratio is um, or what I could have done differently to try to protect them. Next time, I, I actually, all the, for the one that was literally stabbed with a box cutter, if I had put uh, poster tube tape on the end, which I didn't know was a thing until today, then I don't think that they would have come out the way they did. Or I would be able to eliminate all the errors and be like, was that really me? Which in this case, I'm pretty darn confident it wasn't but whew, yeah so there I am oh my gosh it's 20 minutes <gasps> okay I got really 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 toasty I am so sorry that today is primarily going to be a ramble about how angry I am but that's actually okay I think because it shows that there are some unexpected bumps in the way of working with merchandise I want to try to do it in the future because it was so much fun chips and I had a great time we really bonded sitting in my office and we would take each poster out and I signed each and every one by hand so carefully that's why these signed posters were so much more than what the posters that I can ship directly from the, the printing company to people are is because I had to ship them I had to handle each one so many times to make sure that it was signed it was special I had a special spot in my office like on my shelves where they lived so that they were safe from like anything any stray drops of water I took each one out like I had uh, a little towel that I would dip my fingers on and like carefully pick it up and carefully hold it and carefully roll it and slide it oh so gently into each tube and Chips and I had a good time bonding while we were doing that um I was really surprised he enjoys shipping stuff out and I realized how nice it was to have something physical that made our, our adventures in our world a little bit more real. I don't even think twice about it for other people. I am so excited to get back home so I can get some of the new eat your sushi swag from Simon and Martina. I really, 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 really want that Nemer's pillow. Oh my gosh, I want that so bad, but I couldn't justify it for my budget as a treat to myself yet. But man, I want that. I want some Nemer's stickers to put on lily pad, actually. That's what I really want, are some of the, the Nemer's cupcake cat stickers. That's what I want to be able to put on lily pad. Um, and uh, you know, I've got some of Stacy's stuff. I got Stacy's uh, mug. I have her backpack on its way to my, oh, if you're watching, stop watching, Eden. <laughs> On my way to my niece, who I don't think will be watching this one anyway, because Auntie, Auntie hasn't done anything more interesting than yell at the camera for like a half hour. Um, and I don't even think twice about it, but I just, you guys have seen me struggle with this sense of like, people want to spend money on me or just it's it's surreal it's surreal I never got into this to be known or or a household name it always kind of makes me smile when I hear youtubers who are in the similar genres as me who want to be famous they want people wearing their shirts they want people to have their posters and that's really interesting I'm not dismissing it it's just such a different lifestyle than I even think about that it's really something new for me to even even 
try to understand. I guess it's because first and foremost, I'm a teacher and a storyteller in my heart and head and a joy artist. Um, and there's definitely room for people to want to climb a different route and become more like fame and celebrity based, but uh, I'm happy with what I do. I'm very happy with what I do. And so it's reassuring to know that that means I'm going to take the steps to do the utmost to make the quality of whatever merch we do create as fantastic as it can be. I'm actually going to be reaching out, um, if not today, then in the next few days to some of our amazing fan artists. Not only am I gonna be trying to work with Eric in the future who did the poster art and who has done pretty much all of the art that we use for most of our series, except the Warrior Cat stuff. Those are individual fan artist um yeah i'm gonna be reaching out to eric who's amazing and there's a couple other people who have already reached out to me mink is definitely oh my gosh mink i'm so excited to share some of her stuff she's been doing for the community uh and there's a couple others jewel and a couple others who i'm going to be reaching out to for plans for the future but i'm definitely gonna have to think about maybe doing it smaller scale so i can test things out and be like can I trust them again? Or have they lost my trust? And it will be FedEx for, or U UPS, who really handles all of our Amazon stuff great from now on. So I'm gonna have to think about it because I'm pretty toasty. But on that note, I'm actually physically toasty too because I have a fever. <laughs> So maybe it's just like toasty Siri day and I'm sorry I'm not doing anything more interesting than hopefully watching this cat. Bird is sleeping. But hopefully watching this cat but yeah, I'm, mm, I'm so sorry if things have happened to your posters. And, uh, oh, I do have a fever. And that's to be expected. I'm going to try, I know I look really good. It always stuns me how good I look when I have a fever. <laughs> but I do have a fever today, so I'm trying to play it a little more low-key. Chips and I only have one set of keys, but tonight we are going to be meeting with the owner of the place that we're staying at, and we're going to ask her if we can have a second set of keys. Because the problem is we have to do multiple doors to get up to our apartment. One door to get into the building, and then another door to get through the gate, and then and then another door to get into the actual apartment. So <laughs> with only one set of keys, I can't leave and go adventure and just kind of walk around by myself at like the pet stores or go get a drink down at the juice stall uh, right, right below our apartment without worrying about if I don't come back in time, he's locked out and our, our phones don't work here because we haven't gotten SIM cards for this side of the world because we're always together. Why would we need to go and get SIM cards? We're always side by side but that's shooting me in the foot a little bit now that I want to go and explore the pet store I want to go get some passion fruit juice to cool off because I'm still a little bit physically and emotionally toasty and he's on campus for his very first day of orientation which is hopefully going really exciting if he's not dying in the heat and um, yeah it's it's gonna be whew, a little bit more of a rest day so this is a good thing for me um, the, to have a fever now when I can't even leave anyway because we don't have another set of keys because I'll be able to just spend some time resting uh, try to sort through what the heck to do for like the Etsy tracking issues and the poster issues I'm so whew, about that and then I'm going to try to get my very first work day down. I am sorry that this has switched from Taiwan Adventures to Siri Rambles, so I'll try to mark the vlog as a ramble vlog just to warn you guys that it's just me talking for a while. Um, but whew, yeah. Um, oh, and why do I have a fever? For those of you guys who don't know, my family, the women in my family have compromised immune systems, usually ending up with uh, systemic lupus by the time you're in your 30s and 40s. I have been able to, I'm turning 30 this year, but I've been able to really kind of push that off for a long time by being vegan. Um, I lost 100 pounds a few years ago and that really helped. I am continuing to try to strive for my health, but I suffer from constant fever and um, just get really sick really easily. That's one of the reasons that working as a YouTuber has been amazing for me. There's a difference in being able to have a fever, not feel well, sit down and lose myself in storytelling for a few hours, and when I had to work,
work uh, like at the, the flower farm or when I worked commission at a pet store or when I would work uh, as a nurse, especially when you, ha you can't go in because you have a fever and you're working with the elderly and suddenly you don't have a job because you have a fever like three or four times a month. And so yeah, that's, that's why I have a fever. It's nothing to be alarmed about. It's normal and I know the steps to take. I have my medicine. I'm going to be taking it very low key. I have lots of water. I'm going to rest a lot. Um, that's why being a YouTuber is so fantastic for me. I can stay home and produce so much more than if I try to go and work outside of the home, be exposed to so many more germs, be exposed, oh my skin is so hot right now, <laughs> be exposed to um, so many more people. My my immune system does better. I most days it may sound kind of lonely like oh Siri you're stuck in the house all day till chips comes home. I actually stay home and I usually only leave the house for my daily walk and then maybe a date with chips once or twice a week. And otherwise I stay home all day which may sound kind of like sad. <laughs> we do go on adventures. You guys have seen some of our adventures. But the reason I do that is to minimize my exposure to all of the uh, all of the germs and all of the things that are out there and it really helps out um, to be able to do what I do as Siri for so many things, especially because of my health. I'm able to rest. Like now I'm really worn out. You can probably tell my energy level has gone from here to down here. I'm able to rest more and because I'm able to take care of myself a little bit more gently than if I had to work outside of the home to make ends meet, I really am hoping, fingers crossed, I take special Ovegas, I submit my genetics like I spat in a tube and sent it off and actually just got some emails for submitting my genetic information for more testing uh, to try to head off not getting lupus the way so many of my family has and not ending up fully bedridden by the time I'm in my mid 30s like so much of my family. So that's what I'm working on. <laughs> that's why I have fevers. It's nothing to be alarmed about. It's normal. Sounds really serious, but it's just part of the the genetic dice that got rolled for me. And I do take a lot of steps being a YouTuber, being able to build a community like this so that I have the privilege and the joy of being able to work from home has very largely been a huge boon to my health. I used to get the flu like five or six times a year. I used to be out uh, probably like a week out of every month I wouldn't be able to work because I was so sick. And now it's just a day of fussing because I have a fever every once in a while and having to not record for a little bit but being able to record as soon as I feel well enough to sit up and that really helps. Um, but that's why that's why so i'm really toasty and this has been very rambly so i'll stop but oh yeah i i'm really sorry if you got a poster and it's damaged let me know i i promise you they were not put in damaged and i am shocked offended and flustered and a little angry a lot angry that apparently tampering with that kind of mail is uh par for the norm and now I will forever and ever and ever when I ship posters myself make sure to put in all sorts of uh, special tape and that makes so much sense why the posters that I got delivered to me were wrapped in so many like special boxes with like I had there were like five boxes deep it was kind of ridiculous now I know why um so huh, there's that so I'm gonna rest today. I'm sorry today has been a ramble day and not something more exciting for exploring Taiwan but it feels good to have cleared up a few things and my skin is really toasty, really hot. So I'm gonna get some rest and then maybe try to do a little bit of work because that's the other thing. When your heart is breaking, joyful creation can heal beyond words is something I say all the time. But also if your heart's unsettled, like when you're really angry, sometimes being able to slow yourself down and kind of enter the zen flow of creativity can help so much too. So I'm going to see what I can get done before Chips gets home. And if we go on another adventure, I will try to add that in too. So it's not just like ramble vlog ahoy <laughs> for today. If not, I'll rest. And then hopefully with a little bit of rest, kicking this fever in the rump and tackling these poster problems, I will be able to do something a little bit more exciting together as a treat for all of us. And maybe go to a night market or another shop and we'll be able to look around and just have a good time and continue the adventture. Adventure. So I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.